Hi everyone and welcome to this new Touch Designer tutorial. This is a translation from a French tutorial I created on how to create these particle effects. So the idea is I was inspired by Erica Anderson's work. She works a lot with After Effects, but she did this sketch, which is basically a cylinder uh, created with particles uh, filling the shape. And I wanted to create the same thing with Touch Designer. Uh, with Touch Designer, we can create different shapes uh, with SOP and then have particles follow it. So it's a very interesting tool because particles are an important part of Touch Designer and they're not so easy to start using uh, if you're a beginner. So follow me and we'll start creating our new sketch. So we start with an empty space and we're going to create a simple shape which is going to generate the particles. So we create a sphere and then we will add a null. The idea is that the null uh, will, will be able to add some elements before the null. And then we're going to add the particles. So this is going to generate the particles and we're going to already create uh, the basics we need for our render. So Geometry, camera, we don't need any lights since particles are basically a uh, sprites element. So you just need a render and you should be able to see uh, the result uh, without the light. So then I will add a null. And now you can't really see uh, the particles on screen because uh, we need to do a couple of adjustments, but uh, you will see uh, I just add a background first. So let's add a background. Now it's working, but let's make it black. So particles are going to be white. Changing the input so it will keep our resolution. And finally, uh, we're going to change the render to, uh, to render as point sprite. So we can use a material. We are going to use the point sprite material, which can basically uh, which basically is the material we can use for our particles. So I simply add it as a usual, as a simple material like we usually do. And then we can change a couple of parameters. Let's change the scale so we can see it better. As you can see, it's working, but the problem right now is that our particles uh, are generating in a simple, uh, and simple shape and following the whole shape all the time, which is basically uh, the uh, the uh, the sphere. We also are going to use uh, another uh, ramp. So this is going to be our ma our color map for our material. So what is what this is going to change is basically change the square elements for particles to some round elements where I will change uh, the, the the gradient so we can create a uh, 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 circular gradient and this is going to be much more interesting as you can see right now for the different particles so this is basically it you can very simply create those particles and it's much more interesting, as you can see uh, with the ramp, instead of having some square particles, we have, uh, we have a, a gradient. Uh, yeah, and finally we need to blend the transparency. So very, so this is, we don't want to have a black layer on top of a white layer in the particles. So this is working. And as I explained before, we need to now address uh, a couple of issues with our particle system. The first one is, going to be uh, the fact that we're basically creating the particles in the, and they're following each other uh, going around the sphere. So to do that, we're going to do to the, just so you understand before I explain everything, it's basically there every point on the sphere has a number and the particles are just created following this number. So what we can do to address this problem is use a sort. So we can sort the different points in the in the the sub and change it to random. As you can see, now particles are going uh, randomly around. And the other problem is actually the normal of the sphere are going out, outward, 
and we want to go them to go inward so we can bring particles inside. This is supposed to be the sphere that's outside with the particles going inside. As you can see, this is not the case at the moment because particles are following the normal. So we need to insert um, the point sub so we can invert uh, the normals. So now particles are going to go in the same way as the normal do, but the normal will be facing inwards if you add a simple minus in front of every parameter right here. As you can see right now, it's working. And you can see the, sh the shading of the sphere is different because normals is also how the, sh the shading appears on the elements. And as you can see, normals are inside. So this is more the effect we want. Uh, we're going to change the size of the sphere. So it's, it's going to look like it appears from outside our canvas. So this is mostly the effect we want. Now we're going to add our shapes and play a little bit with our particles to create the exact effect that we want. So uh, we're going to use another sphere and use a transform and just simply rotate the sphere a little bit. So our particles are going, we're going to try to attract our particles to the sphere and make them follow uh, our elements. So just adding some simple rotation on two axes. So our element is, is going to, to turn. And we are also going to change it to create a, to create a icosahedron instead of a sphere so we can see a little more how it rotates because the sphere of course you can't really see it and finally we're going to insert it in the last of the inputs so this is a surface attractor as you can see if i show you the different inputs uh, you have the sphere which where is where the different particles come from and you have the icosahedron that's basically the surface attractor as you can see, it, it's not working as it is right now because we have to change a couple of parameters because the particles are not exactly uh, are not exactly living up to a point where they can go to the element. So we're going to change the life, uh, the life expectation of the different particles. So this is basically uh, this is basically the, how long the, are the particles are going to live and also. We're going to change how much, how many particles we create. So it's the number per seconds, and then it's the number, uh, it's the number of seconds they each live. So we can change the uh, the variance too. So if you want some particles to not go at the same, uh, have the same life. But now it's working mostly. We're going to change mass and drag, because if you can see, uh, it's kind of working, but not exactly as we want. So if you change mass and bring it really high particles are going to take a longer time to accelerate, but also to decelerate. If you change the drag, you're also going to change the friction. So by bringing up those two values, we're really uh, keeping the, the different uh, particles up to the surface attractors. And the final thing we're going to do is, uh, is going to be to change the um, the effect when the particles hit the surface attractor. Right now, there's a hit behavior which is die on contact, but for that we need to create another uh, input, which is uh, basically the collision. So the collision and the attractor is the same. So right now, when the particle hits the hits the shape they were going to die on contact. We're going to create a bounce on contact instead. So now the particles are going to bounce. And since they have a big mass and drag, they are not going to bounce very far away. And also right now they're not dividing. So we can also change that so we can divide the particles. So it's going to create more particles around the attractor uh, for that. And we can also uh, reduce how the particle bounces. So, so they, they bounce, but stay close to our shape. 
And finally, we're, as I said before, we're going to change our split. And now we're going to change the values to one because otherwise our computer is kind of going slow right now. And as you can see, you can really see a better uh, a better shape right now. And we can really see the different angles of the icosahedron. So I think this is good for effects. Uh, we can change the, the the size of the scale, so a bit a bit smaller. And as you can see right now, it's more dense in particles. We can see the shape. This is basically uh, the effect. We're going to do some compositing. But of course, if you would like to, you could insert a switch right here. That's what I used in the sketch I created and published, where I switched between a shape and another. So you can could switch between, a, a, for example, a box and this shape. Uh, if you want to do that, you can use a pattern to do it uh, following the timeline. As you can see, uh, if I change, now it's a box, so the, po the particles are following the box. Basically, you, you can do that and animate it with the pattern. I'm not going to do this to keep this tutorial shorter, but of course, you can expand and go beyond what I do in this tutorial. So the last thing we're going to do is do so some compositing to create this kind of glowy effect on our particles. So we're going to use an add, uh, and we're going to use blur and a level so we can create our glowy effect. So this glowy effect is going to uh, enable us to create the effect we wanted, as you saw on Erika Anderson's post. So to do this, as I said, we just middle mouse button, you click and you use a blur. And then we're going to use a level. So the thing we're trying to create is blurry and particles, a blur behind the particles. So it's going to create some kind of glow and light effect and crank up the level so we can see this, uh, this blurred particles since they're really small. If you don't use a level, you probably won't even see them. So I'm going to change a little bit of the steps and also the filter width. And we're going to bring the brightness really, really high. So as you can see, uh, you can see how blurry, but also how uh, light it is. Of course, we're going to adjust that uh, in the in time when we need it. But maybe the compression is not exactly great on YouTube, so maybe it's not super easy to understand. But uh, this is kind of working. Uh, you can we can see blurriness, but uh, of course, right now levels it's a little bit high, so we're going to reduce this size, and we're also going to change the colors, and then we're going to also again play with the levels. So to change our colors, as uh, as we usually do, and when you have a black and white sketch like this, we're going to use a lookup. So the lookup. Uh, I don't know if I, I don't remember if I've already explained it, but basically lookup is a very simple uh, thing where we change the values of black to white to uh, those value of the gradient you input them to. Right now it doesn't change anything because it's already in black and white, but what we can do is change the values on the gradient we use an input, and this is going to replace the values of black and white inside the uh, inside uh, our top. So of course, like I said, it's the default gradient, but if I change the value, so example, instead of white, I go for something like a more of the uh, green and blue. As you can see, the white changes. The black, of course, doesn't change because black our black is still black, but we can also, what's fun with that is that we can add some other values. So for example, we can add another value uh, when it's between black and white. And for the white, which means basically when there's a, lo a lot of particles close together, we can have another value. So this creates kind of this electrical effect where there's a lot of particles and then the colors changes. So as you can see right now, of course, as I said before, the compression might not <laughs> really render very well, but of course, play with those values and have it uh, the best way it is for you. But 
uh, on my screen when I'm recording this, it's working really well because many particles create this like lighter blue. And I think it's a really neat uh, effect. Of course, as always, play with them and uh, change those values. So that's it for our tutorial. I really hope you've enjoyed it and that you will try to recreate this effect. As always, feel free to share your work with me. I'm more than happy to take a look at it. Also, ask your questions in the, in the comments if you have any. Subscribe if you want more videos like this and see you in the next one.